You may or may not know it, but the Mars Robot Club is about to get bigger with the addition of the European Trace Gas Orbiter and a new lander or whatever. Trace Gas Orbiter? <sighs> Obviously it's cool. Hey there, Red Planet fanatics. Trace here for DNews. Mars might already have plenty of orbiters and rovers hanging out, but it's about to gain an awesome new orbiter lander double whammy. ExoMars is actually two parts. The first is an orbiter, wonderfully named the Trace Gas Orbiter, and a lander named Schiaparelli. The second is a European rover and Russian surface lander that will launch in 2020. It's taken that first half of the ExoMars mission seven months to reach the Red Planet, but once it arrives, that's when things get really exciting. First, Schiaparelli detaches, and after a three-day coast to Mars, it will reach the Red Planet's upper atmosphere, traveling an incredible 13,000 miles an hour. At that speed, you could go from Los Angeles to San Francisco in a little over a minute and a half. As it plows through the atmosphere, the lander's heat shield will bear the brunt of the deceleration, and it only has six minutes to nail that perfect touchdown. To do that, it will ditch the heat shield and use built-in parachutes designed for the super-thin Martian atmosphere. And once it's slowed down, it will cut away the chute and kick in some rocket power to control the final landing. The crazy bit is that around two meters above the ground, the Schiaparelli lander will hover, the engines will cut, and a specially designed crushable structure will absorb the shock of the final fall like a car's airbag. Now, the lander is a bit of an experiment for the European Space Agency because they've never successfully landed on Mars before. It's not easy. About half of the missions to Mars have failed. So Schiaparelli and the TGO are in part to test the technologies to safely land payloads onto the Martian surface and then carry out science once they're there. On the surface, should the landing be successful, Schiaparelli will become a temporary Mars weather station, measuring wind speed and direction, air pressure, humidity, and temperature at its landing site. Up in orbit, the TGO will act as a relay station, beaming back Schiaparelli's data to Earth. Alas, the lander is only battery powered, so it has a limited lifespan. Once it completes two days of tasks, its mission will be over. Considering NASA currently has two operational rovers on the surface of Mars, and previous landers have carried a more sophisticated suite of instruments to Mars than this mission will, this new Schiaparelli lander may at first seem a little lame. But come on, this lander orbiter double act is only the first half of the awesome ExoMars mission that will see a follow-up rover in 2020. And the TGO isn't just a glorified telephone operator for Schiaparelli and this future Mars rover, it will itself map methane in the Martian atmosphere with the hope of pinpointing where the gas is being produced. Why? Because methane can be produced by microbial life. So tracking down its source could be a huge boon to astrobiologists hoping to uncover whether or not Mars currently has a subsurface infestation of Martian bacteria. This will set the stage for the 2020 rover arrival in the second half of the ExoMars mission. That future rover will hunt down life's so-called biosignatures. Biosignatures are basically chemicals that can be produced by biological processes. So the detection could point to evidence of past life on Mars or possibly current life on Mars. The European Space Agency just sent its final commands to the little robot lander that is set to separate from the TGO on October 16, 2016. If all goes well, it will automatically land near the red planet's equator in a region called the Meridiani Planum. Needless to say, this is a crazy cool mission that we will be talking about for years to come. The ExoMars mission has only just begun. Okay, in the spirit of science, I'm excited to announce that next week, I will be one of the guest judges at the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge Finals. You can register to watch the event live to see presentations from the top 10 finalists. They've been working all summer with a 3M scientist mentor to create their original projects, and they are awesome. Biodegradable plastics, remote control robots to test water quality, plastic pollution reduction using, wait for it, pumpkins. Seriously, I'm geeked. You can register to watch live at youngscientistchallenge.com slash final event. It's on Tuesday, October 18th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. Did you know there's a plan to get to Mars in three days? Yeah, three days. Check out how you'll be getting there here. Currently, NASA uses chemical propulsion or burning fuel to accelerate and launch their spacecraft. Photon propulsion is an idea that would use light particles called photons instead. 
It is similar to the idea of solar sails that use light rays from our sun, which bounce off our reflective surface, creating a small amount of energy that propels the craft forward. I'm obviously partial to the Mars Science Lab mission, known as the Curiosity mission. It was one of the first I covered, but what is your favorite Mars mission? Let us know in the comments. Keep coming back here every day for more D News, and please subscribe so you get all our videos.